Many of us complain about the power consumption of the more recent Intel and AMD CPUs, but how much of a difference is there actually in power draw? And not only at full load, but also during gaming. Part of today's comparison is a whole range of recent AMD Ryzen 7000 and Intel's 13th gen CPUs, from flagship models down to mid-range ones. Before we delve into the power draw measurements, I'd first like to point out that all the tests for the following Intel and AMD CPUs were conducted with different motherboards, all by the brand ASRock. We're talking chipsets such as X670E, B650E, B650 on AMD side, and Z790 as far as Intel is concerned. Meaning both recent platforms have been equipped with the same identical DDR5 memory, going by the name of Kingston Fury Beast RGB and sporting a frequency of 6000 MHz, CL36 timings and a capacity of 32GB. I've also gone with the identical AIO liquid cooler and of course our usual RTX 3090 graphics card, which is going to play a major role in the gaming power consumption results, obviously. Before we get started, I'd like to let you know right off the bat that we will not be looking at the performance of today's CPUs. Those that are interested in it should watch one of my dedicated reviews or comparisons instead. That's because both Intel as well as AMD are offering great performance right now. Let's get started with one of the classic tests at full load and at idle. Cinebench R23 is a pretty heavy AVX load and does indeed make CPUs draw quite a bit of power from the wall. At first glance, it becomes obvious Intel with their more recent CPUs from model to model tend to consume noticeably more power under such a load as opposed to AMD's counterparts. We do have to watch out a little bit here though. For Intel I have two entries per CPU within the charts. That's because I've tested both at stock auto settings, fully dictated by the motherboards as far as power limits are concerned, as well as at power limits as officially stated by Intel. Especially with the 13900K and 13700K, we actually get to see quite noteworthy differences there and those should not be ignored. Starting at the top when referencing those stock auto settings, the 13900K consumes exactly 105 watts, or roughly 28% more power than the 7950X. The 13700K draws even 140 watts, or 46% more from the wall than its counterpart 7900X. Separating the 13600K from the 7700X are 81 watts, basically the Intel model drawing 34% more here. If we are comparing the 7600X with the 13600K, even though such a comparison is a bit unfair in terms of performance, the 13600K goes to show a 107 watt or 51% higher power draw. Well, obviously, these Intel CPUs don't seem to shine here. Things become fairer once we start comparing with adjusted power limits according to the official Intel specification and not once simply dictated by the motherboard to squeeze out every final remaining bit of performance there is. Starting at the top of the charts once more, a 13900K now consumes only 35 watts or 9% more power over the 7950X. A 13700K as opposed to the 7900X then draws 105 watts or 34% more juice. One does wish for somewhat more appealing results here. Now if we were to compare the 13600K with the 7700X, that i5 would consume 78 watts or 33% more. And if we are comparing the 13600K with the 7600X, we're looking at a 104 watt or 50% higher power draw on the 13600K. However, when glancing over to the measured idle results, for the most part, it's Intel that seems to be doing a little better than AMD, even though those Ryzen CPUs that come with lower core counts seem pretty comparable in terms of idle power draw compared to Intel. Especially unappealing are those 123 watts measured for the 7950X while idling doing nothing. That specific model at idle 
tends to consume a whopping 38 watts or 45% more power than the 13900K. Under certain circumstances, that hurts a whole lot more than having the CPU consume a little more power at full load, depending on your use case. Other than that, the remaining Intel and AMD processors are neck and neck as far as idling is concerned. The only exception being the 13600K, which really stands out from the masses in a good way. It draws 15 to 20 watts less than those other models on the list. That's very praiseworthy. But now let's move on to the gaming power consumption. This is where we don't see that noteworthy differences, whether the motherboard is going for its own auto settings or we strictly set Intel's power limits manually. Obviously, both CPU and GPU are put to work here, which is why we're looking at a significantly higher power reading here in general. The 13900K still does draw around 20 watts or 3 to 4% more from the wall than the 7950X. Once we compare the 13700K against the 7900X, the consumption of Intel's processor is roughly 25 watts or about 5% higher than the one of the AMD counterpart. 25 watts and nearly 5% higher power draw is witnessable when comparing the 13600K with a 7700X. If compared with the 7600X, the 13600K tends to suck 32 watts or a little over 6% more out of the wall. What however seems to apply to both manufacturers, Intel and AMD, is that you unnecessarily drive up power consumption while gaming when going with higher end models, in turn not even seeing any significant noteworthy increase in gaming performance. So our old rule of thumb seems to apply here once more, and that is that you do not need a high-end CPU or a upper mid-range model to game efficiently. Power efficiency is the keyword and leads us to our next topic. Needless to say, Intel as well as AMD CPUs can still benefit from manual optimizations by partially going with different power and temperature limits and going through the hassle of undervolting. Undervolting sadly hasn't gone all too well with my specific 13900K sample, which is why I had to content myself with stock Intel power limits as a way to optimize the chip instead. This indeed led to a great success, reducing the power draw at full load without any noteworthy performance losses by 14%. The power consumption of AMD's flagship I managed to lower by nearly even 16%. With the 13700K, I quickly managed to drop the nasty numbers by 21%. And in the case of the 13600K, the power consumption can easily be reduced by an incredible 26%. Unfortunately, I haven't done any optimization work with those remaining Ryzen CPUs. It clearly needs to be said though that your mileage may vary from CPU to CPU. At the end of the day, it's a matter of luck, similar as it's with overclocking and undervolting. The bottom line is that you're consuming a little less power with those recent AMD CPUs. This for the most part applies to heavy loads that utilize all cores, basically workloads such as rendering, video encoding and so on. And as far as gaming is concerned, we're here and there looking at smaller gaps, albeit AMD seems to be running slightly more power efficient here too. However, one should not underestimate the idle power draw when doing nothing. For the most part, those results end up looking better and less worrisome on Intel's side. As long as you don't go with the AMD flagship 7950X, the remaining Ryzen models are somewhat comparable in efficiency with Intel though. Star of the show, needless to say, is the 13600K, even making Intel's very own higher end models look bad in a way. I'll be honest with you, I'm not happy with the power draw of all these CPUs, be it Intel or AMD. All the more I'd therefore recommend taking matters into your own hands and start optimizing. I've talked about that exact topic in my videos for Intel and AMD CPUs respectively. Alternatively, you could just pick up models that come with a noticeably lower TDP right out of the box. There are options available for both Intel and AMD. Guys, this might be one of the most boring videos I've produced in a long time to some of you, but power consumption and efficiency, to me and actually a lot of you out there, 
ended up becoming a pretty serious topic. With that said, thank you so much for watching, take care, and until the next one.